Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hermitcraft. Today, guys, I have been amazed, stupefied, and I have been humbled by the amazingness of the bundles. I've used this in all my chests now to save a bunch of space for things we don't have a whole lot of. It is one of the most useful things in the game, and I hope that they add this in the future update. But besides that, what are we doing today? Well, today we want to build a couple more farms because I need some resources to build a big thing which I want to build in the future, uh, but I am not ready to quite build yet. So, the farms we're going to try and make today are going to be farms that supplement other farms. So, basically I want to make a sugar cane and a bamboo farm. However, one second, just snipe this guy. Uh, however, we don't have the capacity to do that just yet because I like to use a flying machine based design which uses, you know, slime blocks and honey blocks, but we don't have any slime blocks at all. So if we get up here, you can see in the bundle we have six slime balls to our name and we have zero honey blocks or honey bottles even. Uh, so we need to get slime and honey, get those farmed up in sufficient quantities to be able to actually farm sugarcane and bamboo for wood and for uh, paper uh, mostly. So that is something we need to tackle today. So basically in order to make a slime farm, we got to clear out an area somewhere underground uh, in slime chunks to make a slime farm. And in order to do that, I would prefer to have a beacon. And luckily, I got some wither skeleton skulls, so we're going to go and fight the wither. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we found a geode underground here. And I think this is where we're going to spawn in the wither. Uh, we're also going to make sure we have strength and regen. And uh, yeah, we also, you know, we got our bow out. We got our sword. I think we should be set. We got full netherite gear, so hopefully everything goes okay. So let's just do... Uh, let's say we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll just put this all down. I think, I think we're good to go. One, two, three. Oh, it didn't work. I think cause that has to be off. All right, let's try it now. There we go. Okay, let's get back a little ways. So I don't normally show wither fights like this, but this one was kind of interesting in that I think there was a glitch that happened to me right here. If you watch closely here, I actually get shot and withered and start to take damage, but I actually don't lose hunger. I'm not sure if this is a known bug or if this is a, something that has happened to anyone else, but... If it is, please leave a comment in the comment section, uh, but you'll see here that, yeah, I'm getting ready to eat because I anticipate that my hunger will go down. After all, I'm taking huge damage, and it just doesn't go down. So I'm not really sure what could have caused this, and I don't really realize it until the wither starts coming down and hits me again, actually, right there. Uh, so now I'm withered again, but again, I still can't eat. And at this point, I sort of realize it, so I start backing away, because something is definitely up. I should be losing hunger, but I'm just not for whatever reason. And because I don't have the ability to regenerate health, uh, the wither hit me a few times, and I end up just dying from the wither, which is kind of wild. <laughs> so, so basically, in conclusion, I have no idea what happened. I know there is a bug with portals, like nether portals. Sometimes you can go through those, and your hunger just doesn't deplete. If you somehow like desync with the nether portal. Also, apologies for my voice. I have become very, very ill over the last few days. So, apologies if this is uh, sounding a little bit strange. Uh, however, we were able to make our way all the way back to where we fought the wither. Uh, and go down the tunnel. We picked up all of our gear and equipped it all again. And the second time, the fight went pretty easily. We defeated the wither within about a minute. Uh, didn't have any problems with gaining... Uh, or losing hunger so we could regen a little bit and it was almost trivially easy which i expected the first time so if anybody has any insight onto what happened please do let me know but we did get our beacon 
And after we got our beacon, it was time to dig out an area for our slime farm. You know what's really strange? The fact that we still can't find slime chunks in vanilla Minecraft without just digging out a massive area and then just observing where slimes spawn, and then also knowing where chunk boundaries are and how to find them, like for instance by hitting F3 plus G, and knowing that then in that chunk below Y40, slimes can spawn. Shouldn't there be an in-game way to do this without reverting to like third-party programs and just observing where slimes spawn? I feel like there should be, but there's not currently. Uh, regardless, we got the beacon up, we're digging out our slime farm. We're gonna basically dig out a whole bunch of layers below Y40 here. And yeah, then hopefully we see a couple slimes uh, spawning in the area. I actually need to get like a ladder or something here to help me get up. Um, but yeah, I just find it very, very odd. First of hopefully many, many slime. There we go. Should get a couple of slime bowls out of this. Yeah, there we go. Nice, all right. Very good, very good. Also, we dug into this awesome cave. This is pretty much like right under our iron farm. So yeah, kind of a neat cave. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So here we have it. We have our slime chunk dug out. Uh, you can actually see this is the actual slime chunk here that I'm standing on currently uh, and then we have multiple layers of this going up if I just hop over here you'll see we got a layer here where the beacon currently is <laughs> uh, we got a layer up here on the next layer we got a layer above this right here and then it just keeps going for another I think three layers above that so quite a few layers with this slime chunk uh, sort of exposed and dug out um, and so the idea is that what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, an area near the side of the chunk where there's magma blocks. So magma blocks are going to be like this. When the slime jumps on them, they get damaged. We don't get too much damage because we got netherite gear on. But yeah, that's basically how that's going to work. So yeah, we'll just put down uh, magma blocks around the whole area. And we'll also dig out these areas here, three blocks wide like this so that the slimes can jump down onto the magma blocks from the upper levels uh, and slime luckily don't have any uh like self-preservation uh <laughs> ai or anything so they just will jump right onto the magma blocks and be slain uh, then we'll have water streams that whisk away the slime balls probably to that corner and then i want to have basically the slime balls be converted into slime blocks uh, and then shot up to the surface where our house is. Because our house is like maybe like 20 blocks this way. Uh, so we're going to have like a, a slime spout, if you will, on the surface <laughs> near our house. Will be kind of cool. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So that's the plan here. Got to get busy placing down some uh, yeah magma blocks and some water streams. So I'm going to get this going. We'll get this up and running. And I'll be back once we're done. So the slime farm is now complete, and yeah, you can see this farm in action here. Maybe one of these guys will actually fall here. Let's see. Yes, okay, here we go. Yeah, so this is what happens. So the slime falls here. You can see he's taking damage now on the magma blocks, and he'll keep taking damage there on the magma blocks, uh, and then once he eventually splits down into smaller slimes, like that, those slimes die. And eventually, the slime balls make their way into here, as you just saw. Then they go into a hopper here. And, or not a hopper, sorry, the uh, the crafter here. And the crafter, once it hits nine slime balls in the crafter, will craft this thing into a slime block. Uh, which, yeah, should happen any moment now when those other two slime uh, are slain. There we go. Boom. You saw it. it went into a slime block. It shot it into this chest. Got sucked into this hopper. Went into this dropper here. And then got shot out and went up a water column, which is right here, that leads to the surface. Uh, so this will just continuously shoot out... Uh, yeah, continuously shoot out magma. Or not magma. Uh, slime blocks. Uh, whenever yeah, this becomes full. So, yeah. 
pretty cool. So whenever that becomes full, it shoots out a slime block and it goes all the way up to the surface where we still have to make some type of uh, collection system there. Uh, but that's how the system works. Uh, the way we collect the slime balls is we funnel all the balls down here and these chests sort of guide it into this hopper right here. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the whole thing. So we can just close this off. <coughs> Make our way back here. And we'll close this off. Close this off. We do want a little light gap so I can look in there in case something goes wrong or something. But yeah, that is it. We're done. <laughs> Slime farm is now complete. Very good. So let's get up to the top. We need to make a system where we can collect these slime balls. Uh, and it just so happens that the water column basically came up in the middle of our wheat field. So... We're going to have to find a good spot for it. If I make my way out here, you can see. Yeah, there's some slime blocks right there. Just bouncing. Sweet. Four slime blocks. Nice. You love to see it. Uh, so, I think we'll probably take down this wheat farm. And we'll make a little slime collection system right here. Alright, everybody. So, as you can see here, we now have a little slime spout going on. So, slime blocks come up here. Travel over into the hoppers and into the chests. And it looks like, so far... Just from standing here, whoop, there went another one. Uh, we have 12 now slime blocks that we've gotten just passively here. Because the actual slime chunk is like, I think, here-ish or so. So, yeah, we're in sort of an ideal spot to have slime spawn, but not far enough uh, away so that they despawn. So we should see slime blocks come in here slowly over the course of time. Fantastic. So with our slime block farm now complete, we're now ready to move on to the very exciting part of the episode that I've been waiting all day to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to embark on a journey to the edge of time. No, we're about to edge, <laughs> embark on a journey to the edge of logic. No, we're about to embark on a journey to a place that no one has been before. We have actually created some new honey block farm designs. And these not only will craft up honey blocks for us, which is not a trivial task due to the fact that uh, honey blocks, if we look in here, they have a unique, or not really unique, but a uh, unconventional aspect of their crafting uh, that you have to be aware of. Like, the honey block not only gets crafted, but you also have four glass bottles you got to deal with. Not only are we going to solve that problem, but there's also a major issue that a lot of honey farms face. And that is that you have to have, like, a thousand glass bottles just to start your farm. That's kind of ridiculous, and so, by contrast, the farm we're going to be building today, a brand new design, never before seen, that does not require uh, even a stack of glass bottles to start and to function forever. Um, so, you, it just constantly turns out honey blocks, and you never have to do anything, and you only have to have, like, less than a stack, like, I think it's like 40 or 50 glass bottles, and it just goes forever. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, we have bees somewhere up here. Yes, bees' nests. Uh, these I collected from the cherry grove biomes and the flower forest biomes near spawn. Uh, I'm not sure if these all have bees in them. Uh, which, by the way, Moyang, if you're out there, please put a indicator here that tells how many bees are in each bee nest. Like, I don't know why that's not a thing. Like, when I mouse over this, I should have the ability to see how many bees are in here. Like, it should it should say bee nest, and then underneath that, bees, and then a number between one and three. <laughs> uh, or maybe, like, one out, one dash three, right? Like, uh, one dash three, like that. If there's one, if there's two, it'd be like this, and if there's three, it'd be like this. That would be absolutely amazing to have and be able to see, but... Basically, we got to make sure there's three bees in each one, every one of these nests. Then we'll be ready to start to build the farm. Yeah, see, this would save me a lot of time if it was just simply labeled one, two, or three bees. But now we got to place down the thing. We got to watch the bees come out, which can take a few minutes for each and every one of these beehives. So please, Moyang, please label how many bees are in each bee nest. That would be super, super useful. So as far as where this farm goes, I think we're going to go in the back of the iron farm. And put it back here where all these cherry trees are, which means we got a little chopping to do. Okay, guys, we're ready to build this thing now. So I verified that there was bees in all the bees' nests. Uh, I only have 10 now with bees in it. Uh, there was an 11th one that I'm holding back for aesthetic purposes in case we want to use it as like a decoration block or something. 
Uh, and we can always find more bees nest, I guess, uh, in the, in the forest around here. But, uh, so we're going to go with four beehives that produce honey and then six that produce honeycomb because arguably I think honeycomb is probably a little bit more valuable than honey just because of the copper waxing and the sign waxing. Uh, so yeah, that's the new plan. Uh, I'm also going to do just one design of a honey farm, but we're going to build it twice. It's going to be mirrored. Uh, and so the layout I'm going for this is if we, this is our entrance here to what eventually is the building, I want to have honey block production here, honey block production here, and then honey comb production in the back. So that's sort of the layout of the farm. So honey, honey, and honey comb is the layout we're going for. So that's that. I also got my redstone box fit and yeah, I craft up a bunch of stuff. So we should be good to go. Um, so let's go ahead and build this thing right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we now have our honey farm up and operational. So I'm going to show you guys how it works and just sort of walk you through it step by step. So uh, here we have our honey bee nest right here. Uh, this one also produces honey, but just imagine an imaginary line right here. This is one farm on the right side, and then this is one farm on the left side. So there are two separate farms here. You could build this individually on the right side here, and it would work just fine. Same with the thing on the left. But I've combined them both, and the bees have like a common shared space because everybody needs a little friend in this world, you know? So uh, <laughs> that's that. Uh, and basically, the goals of this farm were twofold. Number one, we wanted to automatically craft the honey blocks and return the honey bottles to the system. Number two, we wanted to make a honey farm that didn't require like hundreds and hundreds of glass bottles, which a lot of the honey farms do. Um, so this accomplishes both of those. Uh, so the farm starts up here with the bees, of course. These can be bee nests or bee hives here. And underneath this beehive, we have a dispenser. You can see we have seven glass bottles in this dispenser. Uh, and when this thing reaches honey level five, which it's at honey level four here right now, uh, it'll output a signal to this uh, comparator which is currently being subtracted from four, uh, composter with level four, just like that. So it just happened right there. And you'll see it actually consumed a glass bottle. Uh, so it made that glass bottle into a honey bottle. Now, when that happens, uh, and it does that via, you know, just a redstone signal that uh, powers the, the dispenser. So when that happens, as we just saw, it will then have a honey bottle in this dispenser momentarily. But then it will see that this item hopper down here has an item filter that's filtering for honey bottles. So it will push the honey bottle down into the hopper, uh, at which point this comparator will read out a signal strength of two, which then unlocks this bottom hopper, allowing it to suck the now five honey bottles down into this hopper. Uh, and this honey bottle here will then be pushed into the crafter. So you can see there are now two honey bottles here. Now these honey bottles will sit here until uh, the recipe is complete. So basically until we have uh, four honey bottles to make a honey block. Now when that happens, we have a comparator that reads out of this crafter in the back. So we'll just come on to the back here. And so basically this comparator is reading out of the crafter here. Uh, and when it reads a single strength of nine, uh, it's currently subtracting from 8, so 9 minus 8 is 1. It'll output a single strength of 1 to this redstone dust, uh, which then powers the target block, which then powers a repeater, which we can't see on top of these hoppers, uh, but then it powers ultimately the crafter and tells it to craft. Uh, this is actually the other crafter. The crafter we're actually looking at is on this side somewhere, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so basically, once that happens, it crafts the honey block and it shoots the honey block and the four empty bottles into a chest above it right here, this guy. So the crafter is facing upward into this chest. Now, this chest will then have a honey bottle or a honey block and four empty bottles. And then uh, it will then suck the items down to this hopper and it will try to push them downward first. But... As you can see, we have another item filter for empty glass bottles, uh, meaning that anything that's not that will actually go over to this chest and then down into the storage. Uh, so the honey bo honey blocks will then just basically go into storage. The glass bottles then will activate this comparator and this redstone line, 
which is basically just an item filter, which sends it to a dropper. Uh, and so I can demonstrate this here. You see there's six glass bottles there. If I put a glass bottle in this dropper, there's now seven. So it basically is an item elevator to send the glass bottles back up to the start where the whole process starts again. So that is the entire thing in a nutshell. And again, like I said, there are two separate uh, farms here running, one for this bee nest and one for this bee nest. Uh, and yeah, you can see the they have two separate crafting uh, crafters in here. So <laughs> now we just basically let this thing run and we get free honey block. So yeah. Pretty nice farm, and yeah, it works really, really nice. There we go. Okay, it just happened. Let's go. Honey block. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The first honey block has been crafted. Uh, so, yeah, we should also see. Yeah, the glass bottles return. Let's go. <laughs> That's so awesome. Okay. All right. This is great. This is great. Uh, so... Yeah, these all are working flawlessly, it seems. That guy's good. Yep, we're good. Okay, everything's working. I'm super happy. I think I'm going to build this exact same design on this side. So we'll just have two, like, uh, separate honey production areas. And then the honeycomb farm going to go back here. But everything's working flawlessly. You love to see it. Man, redstone is awesome, guys. Redstone is awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. All of our farms are now complete for the bees now. So we got honey blocks coming in on this side. We got honey blocks coming in on this side. And we got honeycomb coming in in the middle. You can see a little bit more coming in right there. Very, very good. Uh, the honeycomb design I went with is just sort of your standard design. So just two blocks gap. Uh, and then just a comparator on the back with redstone. And then shears in the dispensers. I also put a bunch more shears in uh, just because we had the iron. So why not? So that'll always keep it stocked up. Even though it takes like uh, several, like a couple thousand uh, times for the shears to deplete. Uh, totally from the uh, dispenser. I thought it was necessary and we had the iron so might as well. Uh, so anyways, yeah, with that, uh, I think these farms are completed. Now we do need to make a building or some type of structure around these. Uh, so I'd like to make like a nice aesthetic structure around these. Uh, shouldn't be too hard, but I uh, definitely want to spend some time thinking about like what I want to have, what types of blocks I want to have. So if you have any ideas uh, about what type of structure you'd like to see, uh, do make sure and put those in the comments section below. But for now, guys, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Farewell.